Hello and welcome to another edition of Mosaic, an African-American perspective. I'm your host, Deborah Milo. My guest today is Jean Charleston, executive director and founder of Health Freedom, Inc. And today we're talking about the African-American Health Freedom Walk, an innovative fitness event that makes creative use of Maryland's Underground Railroad sites. Jean, welcome to Mosaic. Thank oh, you so much for coming back on the you. show. Thank you. It's so good to be back. It's thank good. you so much it's good for to having have me you back. back too. My pleasure. I want to start out talking a little bit about inspiration. What inspired you to start Health Freedom, Inc.? Okay. Well, um, I think, you know, I'm a registered nurse mm -hmm. is my um, training. And um, I do volunteer work in the community. And so I, I was volunteering, teaching classes for um, people with diabetes mm -hmm. and high blood pressure. And I was actually teaching a class one night for a group of people that had diabetes. And there was one woman in the class who had diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and she was overweight. Wow, that's a lot. And she just talked about how hard it was living mm -hmm. with all these chronic diseases. I'm sure. And I went home that night, Deborah, and I could not sleep. Mm -hmm. I tossed and I turned, and I just, just literally at one point said, God help me. What can I do mm -hmm. to help motivate people mm -hmm. to make the lifestyle changes that we need in our, our lives today? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I just started thinking about people in this country who had walked for freedom. Oh, yes. Help, and it was freedom. Right. And so I got out of bed and I did a Google search mm -hmm. on um, Underground Railroad and that time period in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And I just started reading the stories, but what really struck me was how people came together, that there were Quakers, abolitionists, free blacks who helped their fellow man in their journey right. to freedom. Right. And so I did, I said, thank you, God, that, you know, we today are enslaved or burdened by our bad health habits. Yes. You know, so many of these diseases, we've shown that we can get better control of them and actually even prevent them. Mm -hmm. There was a big study done called the Diabetes Prevention Program right. that showed we could prevent it. And so that's what gave me the inspiration that I said, I want to do a program that is tied in with that history because Maryland has such a rich, rich history. We and do. I, I wanted to do a program, tie that in, um, and that we all will obtain health freedom and that we will help each other in obtaining that. So I applied and to do a nonprofit and um, tried to start, you know, applying for grants mm -hmm. to be able to do it. And, the program that I'm here today talking about mm -hmm. is a year-long program. Oh, it is a year-long program. It's a year-long program. Long program. Okay, okay. And it's, we form what's called Circle of Friends. Mm -hmm. And a Circle of Friends can be anywhere. It could be um, at a church. It could be at a work site. Mm -hmm. um, actually, a family. I had a family in Baltimore where there was a woman who had five adult children. Three of them were married to... First of all, all five of those children had diabetes. The children three, did? Three of the, mm. no, they were all adults. Three okay. of them married men who had diabetes, and two of the grandchildren had diabetes. The grandchildren. And they, ah. they formed a circle of friends. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Okay. And so what the way it works is that they meet once a week for mm -hmm. six weeks. And they're, the primary thing we're doing is walking or they can do some other type of exercise, but walking. And then after the weekly meetings, they meet once a month. Okay. And we, we do the weekly meetings and then culminate that with a 5K walk. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm here. I want to talk a little bit right, about that right. 5K walk that we, that's our seventh week, mm -hmm. that we are celebrating and honoring them for the accomplishments that they've achieved over the six weeks and then they go from that point to monthly meetings. 
I want to talk about that, but I also want to talk about some of the programs that Health Freedom offers. I was on the website, and I love the blog, by the way. Oh, I really do. Okay. I love the blog. And I want to talk a little bit about the variety of programs that you offer. There's so much information you have there. Yes. Well, we've got, we have a program called Healthy Kids, Healthy Future, mm -hmm. um, and it's a class for young people mm -hmm. to get them uh, on the track mm -hmm. of wellness, and um, it's nutrition and physical activity is mm -hmm. the primary focus. We have the highs and lows of diabetes. Um, uh, we've got a class for, high, well, the diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol. Um, we do a cooking contest. I was about to ask you about yes, that. Yes, that's that, a lot of fun. Is that the one with the churches? We do it primarily with churches. Mm -hmm. um, but we have two. We have a cooking contest and we have a cooking class okay. where we do the cooking class with churches to help the, the, um, the ladies that are doing the cooking at right. the church to change their recipes and to start preparing heart healthy food. And you and I both know how difficult and challenging that can be, especially for African Americans because of the history that we have. Absolutely. You know, and the way that we have eaten through generations. That's right. Nothing, Absolutely. Nothing was made without fat back. Nothing right. Was, greens were boiled for all day. All day. Just various things like that. Absolutely. And I'm sure those cons you know, contributed to the types of health issues that we're struggling with. And we are the past you know making the pies oh, and the cakes, the cakes for him and so <laughs> the pound um, cakes <laughs> yes absolutely so we and the sweet potato pie of course oh, don't, uh, you know don't. can't leave that one out <laughs> absolutely so one of the things that we do we ask them to actually and a lot of these women of course you know don't write their recipe they know these they know, them by they heart. know it by of heart course because of they course. they learn from their mother and that's their, right you know like you said it's just been generations of eating certain recipes, but we ask them to write down mm -hmm. the way that they prepare the different foods. Right. And then we actually work with them and do a recipe modifications on oh, how they nice. can take the, the potato salad right. and make it heart healthier, mm -hmm. or how they can make that sweet potato pie heart healthy. Macaroni and cheese. Macaroni <laughs> and cheese, another big one. Another big one, and yes. Then we, we, we go over that one, and then we give them other um, alternative things that they can try, but we really try to take the recipes that they have and make them a little more heart healthy. It's so good to hear that because, especially in the 21st century, you know, so many young people are growing up now, this generation, and they have all these quick foods. Yes. You know, they go to places like, um, you know, Five Guys and restaurants, and they are eating things that even they don't eat at home. And a lot of, a lot of us, we grew up on McDonald's, Mm -hmm. You know, but primarily it's whatever mom cooked. And if mom was from the South or had Southern roots, then it was a completely different story. That's right. You know, That's a completely right. different story. Yes. So you, so these are hosted annually? The, the, we do the it annually. Mm -hmm. We do. And then we do a, a contest mm -hmm. for, and we've done it where it was um, for just men. We got the men Very out nice. cooking and um, they would submit their recipes and then um, my dietitian would review them mm -hmm. and then give them suggestions about how they can make that chili a little maybe heart healthier and then they bring it um, uh, to, we, we've done it in a different uh, uh, venues. Mm -hmm. um, the last time we did it in Mondalman Mall in Baltimore City. Mm -hmm. um, and then we take those winning recipes and we've put together a cookbook. So you actually have a cookbook? We have a cookbook. No, that's yes. amazing. I have to get your copy. Yes. Please do. Have a Please do. And why is it that it's always men in chili? Yeah. <laughs> it seems to be that way, doesn't it? We do get a lot of men that want to submit their <laughs> chili recipes. Yes, it is funny. They do. They do. Have you seen changes even with children when you're working with the kids? Have you seen changes in their, you know, their patterns and their behaviors with regard or their approach to exercise? We have. But the other interesting thing is that we've gotten the parents to change through the kids. Oh, great. That um, the kids are, you know, well, no, mom, you know, this is what we should be doing, and this is what we should, you know, what Very they're learning. Good. Yes. And they're, they're asking their parents and, and kind of bugging them mm -hmm. about the right way to um, eat, but also in getting exercise. Like, can't we just go for a walk? 
after dinner. Oh, and, that's and great. We're seeing that we're seeing that happening. That the kids are influencing the parents and getting them to be more active. I'm so, so glad to hear it's that. It's working out really nice. It is. It is. Yes. I want to talk about the Health Freedom Walk itself. You know, I've been privileged to attend for the past couple of years, and Jean, I have to tell you, that is an amazing accomplishment. It's so much fun, and the, uh, the chance to learn about the history of the yeah. Underground Railroad, the locations. Talk about uh, this year's walk. So we're doing the walk in, um, in Montgomery County. We're doing it at the Woodlawn um, Manor, mm -hmm. uh, which is in Sandy Springs. Right. And it was, back in the 1800s, it was a hub for Quakers. There were right. a lot of Quakers that lived there. And this, uh, the home actually belonged to a Quaker family. Mm -hmm. And in um, their property, there is a trail that was actually laid by mm -hmm. slaves escaping on the Underground Railroad. And the, the Quakers assisted them in that. And so I just love, love this trail. That yes. um, I always say, if someone wants to know what it felt like, um, to try to um, walk for freedom mm -hmm. in the 1800s. This is the one to do, mm -hmm. it really is. We've done the program in 11 counties mm -hmm. in the state. And um, I hope the other counties don't get upset, but Montgomery <laughs> County is my favorite. And, Thank you uh, for that. <laughs> we've had some great, great trails, but this one is really an, an awesome trail. And so we, we call it our celebration walk, and right. as I said, we're celebrating and honoring our ancestors. Mm -hmm. We're celebrating the accomplishments of those who went through the circle of friends for right. the six weeks. Right. And then the other thing is celebrating our future generations, that we're going to have future generations that are going to be healthier. Um, and so we do all of that the day of our celebration walk. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be on June the 10th this year mm -hmm. at uh, the manor, and we will have um, some actors reenactments of that time period. Right. And people can do a guided walk through the trail. So we have docents that will be there, mm -hmm. and that if they really want to learn all the ways that people uh, would, what they would do to manage to make it to freedom, mm -hmm. um, they'll get to hear that, that history. They'll mm -hmm. get to hear it, or they can do it on their own. They can do it on their own, e either way. You know, last year when I attended, it was just so amazing. I mean, the uh, the, the actors, those reenacting Frederick Douglass. Yeah. You know, Harriet Tubman and, and, and the runaway slave. That was just so poignant. It yeah. really was because you, there was a feeling that came over you of what you were work, what you were accomplishing, and yeah. what the ancestors accomplished. That's true. You know, just a small part of that. That's true. But one of the other things that we do, Deborah, is that the circle of friends. Um, every member receives a training manual, and in the manual, I have a book that. Uh, I'm sorry, I have a map that goes from um, Maryland to St. Catharines, Canada, where Harriet Tubman took her people. And you know something? I want to talk more about that when we come okay. back for break. So Great. when we come back for break, we're going to get more in-depth detail about it. For those of you who've just tuned in, you're watching Mosaic, an African-American perspective. I'm your host, Deborah Milo, and I'm here talking with Jean Charleston. Now, after a short break, we'll be back with more about the African-American Health Freedom Walk. So stay with us. I'm a retired school psychologist, and helping people was my thing. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak, and I appreciated it very much, the attention that was given. <laughs> my name is Julius Gaines, creative writer, poet, photographer. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same.
Please have a seat. I'll be honest. Your resume is not what I'm used to. I know. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need a hard worker. Good. I've got two part-time jobs and to help my parents pay the bills. I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find, cultivate, and train a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Welcome back to Mosaic, an African-American perspective. I'm here with Jean Charleston, and we're talking about the African-American Health Freedom Walk. Jean, before we went to break, we were talking a little bit about, well, a lot, about <laughs> the Health Freedom Walk itself. Pick up where you left off when you were talking about what the walk consists of. So what I was starting to talk about was the training manual right. that members of the Circle of Friends receive. Mm -hmm. And in that manual, we have a map that goes from Maryland to St. Catharines, Canada, where Harriet Tubman took her people to obtain freedom in um, the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And so the way it works, everybody, although we have a lot of Fitbits today, and we've That's got true. people have their, um, their phones can record miles, but everybody yes. receives a pedometer. Oh, nice. So you can record your miles based on that. Right. But let's say you did 10,000 steps today, that mm -hmm. equals five miles, and then you put mm -hmm. five miles on the map. Mm -hmm. And that your goal is to get to Canada. Oh, and my. so okay. it really does motivate people to get more exercise, mm -hmm. that they want to see if they can do that 600 miles. Mm -hmm. It's w one way with 600 miles. One way. One way. And Harriet mm. did it at least six or seven times. Right, according and to the And up history. and down. That's I mean, right. She had to come back down to Maryland to get That's more right. people. That's exactly so, right. So yes, so people want to do it. I I do have one lady. She's actually now on her. She's been doing this several years, but she's on her third trip to St. Catharines, Canada. My that goodness, she's done that, and she wears her pedometer to bed because she said she gets up during the night to go to the bathroom <laughs> and she wants to get every mile she can get. I don't blame her. <laughs> I don't blame her. Yeah. That's incredible. So the day of the celebration, what we make announcements about how many miles people have been able to achieve over the past six um, weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of the interesting things that I encountered when I had a chance to participate last year and year before was that, first of all, just the energy that people have yes. about doing this is just absolutely amazing. Now, was it last year or year before or both that you had the actual choir that was singing as everyone were as coming they came out? came out of the woods. That, that oh, was my, so, it is. That, that, that really reaches the heartstrings. It does. You it know, does. because you watch people and some people struggled, of course, because they're struggling with some, some health issues. Mm -hmm. Others who were able to whisk through, I was not one of those that could whisk <laughs> through it. I <laughs> gladly admit that. But having a chance to just be a part of that and to see the beauty and how everyone was happy, you know, that speaks volumes because I think about the ancestors and what they must have gone through just psychologically. That's right. You know, just psychologically. But you can imagine, I, I remember reading about when Harriet crossed over into Canada mm -hmm. and how she felt that she was in heaven, mm -hmm. that um, the clouds were just lifted. But what we try to do with the walk, like you said, when you're coming out of that woods and you, it's almost like you're, you, you're there, yes. that you've made it up to Canada, and we have the choirs that sing. Yes. And um, it is, uh, it is very moving. It really is. It's, it, and people can hear the choir 
when they're getting That's close right. to the edge That's of right. the end of the woods That's and right. they, they get excited and get a little more energized and, and get out of the woods. Well, I know I did because I was so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I was so tired, but it was a good kind of tired. Well, it's three miles. Yes. Yeah, it's a yes. three mile walk. And it's not, I mean, it's, it's rough. To, uh, we, we tell people that yeah. it's not, um, you, you really can't, if someone is on a cane or in a wheelchair, there's just, unfortunately, they can't do that trail. Um, it's, it's a really, it's a pretty rugged well, trail. Well, I think you spoke very well about it when you said that it's the actual trail it's that the, the slaves trail. had formed as, a, as part of it to freedom. That's I mean, right. because this is not, we're talking about, we're not talking about a paved thoroughfare. That's right. Okay, we're talking about really rough terrain. That's right. But of course, through the years, and just think about the number of feet through they the years gone, that have gone, oh uh, gone through, yes. you know? Yes. So, and, I'm, and in my mind, I'm thinking, so these, these wonderful and amazing ancestors of ours pave the way for us That's right. to for freedom for so many things yes, so and now much. what we're doing we're working and walking towards healthy freedom that's you know right. that's significant yes. there was one part of the trail and I know you know what I'm talking about it was a tree that's it was like a, an opened up tree it's a hollow tree it's a hollow tree and I was uh, the beauty is is that you have the docents the one gentleman he was telling us how there used to be the Quakers used to hide, hide the food that's right. for the runaway for slaves. The runaways. Yes. And that just, we all stood there in utter amazement yeah. and just thinking about how that must have felt at that time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yes, they did. They, they would hide food and sometimes maybe some clothing. Yes. But it was, it, it's an amazing tree mm -hmm. to see that huge hollow opening. And um, mm -hmm. it, it was a good place for them to hide things. Right. Um, you know, one thing, I don't know if you know about the trail, that um, when Oprah did the movie Beloved, mm -hmm. she actually walked that trail. I didn't know that. To prepare for that movie Beloved. I'm going to have to go back she, and watch the movie yeah, and read the book to, again. She wanted, um, to, there's a historian in um, Montgomery County who mm -hmm. assisted her, I think, on the movie and mm -hmm. just, you know, with facts and stuff. And um, she did it at night to be able to see oh what it was like. My goodness. With someone who was trying to escape to freedom. And yes. here we are doing yes. it now, three, four hundred years later, yes. and we're trying to work our way to freedom for our health. For our health. You know? Now, yes. at the end of the walk, I know that there's something that you give to everyone who, is, who has finished the walk. Yes. Talk about that, the Freedmen's. Freedman Slave Tag. Mm -hmm. So what I did, when I, that night when I couldn't sleep, I, <laughs> uh, I came across a picture of something called a Freedman's Slave Tag. Mm -hmm. And it was a tag that um, at, when a slave received their freedom, right. that they were given these tags right. that early on they had what was called manumission, manumission papers. papers yes. And some areas replaced it with these tags. Mm -hmm. And so if you were a free black, you had to wear your tag. And that's, that's right. how they knew you were free. Um, and so when I saw this, I said, oh my goodness, I've got to get this. <laughs> I actually went on eBay that there was one they were auctioning and it went for the origi one of An the original one from 1812. You're kidding. From 1812, it went for $25,000. I bet it did. <laughs> but I what imagine. I did was I had them uh, make, replicate it. It looks just like the tag yes, that they does. received. And I had it made into key rings. Mm -hmm. So what we do is when you arrive for the day of the walk, we put a band on your arm, mm -hmm. symbolizing your burdens, right. your chains. And then when you come out of the woods and you finish the 5K, we cut it off and we give you your tag, and that's symbolizing when the choir, your health freedom. Right, and that's the when choir the choir is singing. singing again, yes. It's, I'm telling yes. you, it is an incredible experience, and I'm yeah. encouraging all of our viewers to come out and to participate. Now, how would someone get information if they wanted to participate in the actual celebration walk? So they can go on our website. We do have a registration form, mm -hmm. um, Health Freedom Inc. Mm -hmm. And, um, or they could call my office at 410-669-6345. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And we can send it to them. Oh, that's um, good. We could send them a hard copy. And then we're working with the African American Health Program in Montgomery County. Health and Human Services, that's yes. right. And so they could also get in touch with them. Right. And they would also help them to be able to get the uh, registration form. 
unfortunately, we've already started our um, circle of friends circle of for friends, this of year. Course, right. But if they would like to join a circle of friends, they mm -hmm. can also get in touch with us because we are uh, we can still get them going. They wouldn't have the full six weeks right. before the celebration walk, but they could still get started and then do the monthly meetings. Oh, that's a good thing, yeah. too. That is a yeah. good thing. When do you typically start with the circle of friends, just out of curiosity? So we start, actually, it's seven weeks before the celebration okay. walk, so this year, we started in April. In April. Yeah, okay, it was the then. week of April the 17th mm -hmm. that we started. Um, that was our first week. Now, is that when you also recruit for conductors? Now, we do the conductors before that. So okay. the conductors are the Circle of Friends leaders. They are the people that are going to help. They're the Harriet Tubman, the Moses, that's going to help Very get their nice. people to uh, health freedom. So we do a conductor's training. Mm -hmm. Uh, to help them just to lead their group. And most people will go back maybe to their church or to their oh, work yes. site, and then they form their walking, their Circle of Friends Walking Club. Mm -hmm. And um, they're just there weekly meeting with them. And some of their conductors are just so creative, some of the things that they're doing. I'll bet. We have one, I mean, she does a different form of exercise with her group every week. So she's done nice. Pilates. Oh, she's nice. done yoga, she's done um, kickboxing. She, she wants to introduce them to lots of different ways to, mm -hmm. to do physical activity. Mm -hmm. So um, she's been good. And I have another one who has a different um, exotic fruit every week that she really? gives to her, her group, to her circle of friends. That yes. sounds wonderful. Yes. So we do, they do get a small stipend for being mm -hmm. a conductor mm -hmm. and it can help to pay like if they did want to buy water or to um, mm -hmm. to do uh, the fruit thing or something like that. Jean, you have become a wellness trailblazer. <laughs> you really <laughs> oh, have and it's so wonderful you. to see that and you know the you know the fact that you have how many years now that you've been doing this? This is actually our 13 14th year. 14 it's actually years. 14 years. It's hard to believe. That's amazing. Does it seem like years. it? It does and it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite sure the, the planning years have involved. gone by so fast, you know, and it seems like it's something different every year. Of course it is. That's, but that's it's, how it it's works. It's been such a joy. It's just the, the lives uh, that yes. I've been able to touch. And, and a lot through those conductors because oh, many yes. of them have, you know, just made a, a tremendous impact on people's lives. And that we've seen people that have been able to get off their medications, uh, have been able to, to lose weight mm -hmm. um, and are living, they mm -hmm. are, they had their health freedom. And what I always say, they've made it to Canada. They've made it to Canada. They've made it to Canada. Any last words of wisdom that you want to leave with our viewers? Well, I think, one, we can never give up. Do you know, one of the things, for instance, Frederick Douglass, he tried to escape it five times, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until his fifth time that he made it to freedom. Mm -hmm. And so many of us have tried diets. We've tried, um, you know, increasing our physical mm -hmm. activity. We tried, but I, I just want to say, don't give up that just as our ancestors kept going mm -hmm. and that you will get to health freedom eventually. And that's what we have to remember, that we will eventually get there. We will. You know, we'll eventually get there. We well, will. needless to say, you'll see me on June the 10th. <laughs> How good. I'm looking forward to it and trying to bring as many people as I possibly can. How many people do you, how many people did you have last year? We had, it was almost 100 nice. that were there. That's right. Um, <clears throat> Our, our goal is to have 200 this okay. year, so um, we, we hope that everybody will come out that day and um, enjoy the festivities and that we'll, we'll have a wonderful day. Well, I'm going to let lots of people know. Thank and folks you. will see this, uh, this Mosaic episode and I'm sure they'll come out. Great, great, <laughs> great. Thank you. County friends, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. I want to thank my guest and friend, Jean Charleston, for sharing information about the annual African American Health Freedom Walk. I'm Deborah Milo. Please join us again next month for another edition of Mosaic, an African American Perspective. Till next time, be good to yourself and others and make it a great and healthy day.